And today I want to tell you about the most important Donald Trump story you've probably never heard. Actually, it's not so much a story as a correction to a story. And it involves some of the most dangerous forces in our world today, whether you were a Trump supporter or not. I'm talking about the forces of groupthink, mass hysteria, and an unchecked mainstream media that has decided that it has the power to decide who is and is not a fit and proper person to hold public office. Now, I want you to cast your mind back to a few months ago, to that messy period after the election and before the inauguration of Joe Biden. Specifically, remember a story that ran on January 3rd in the Washington Post and was beamed around the world, claiming that Donald Trump called Georgia's Secretary of State, George Raffensperger, and urged Mr. Raffensperger to, quote unquote, find the ballots that would put him over the top in the state, winning him those electoral votes. Now, according to the story, which was published by The Washington Post's Amy Gardner, President Trump on the phone call urged Brad Raffensperger, the Jordan Secretary of State, to find enough votes to overturn his defeat in this extraordinary one-hour phone call Saturday that legal scholars described as a flagrant abuse of power and a potential criminal act, The Washington Post said. The Washington Post obtained a recording of the conversation in which Trump alternately berated Raffensperger, tried to flatter him, begged him to act, and threatened him with vague criminal consequences. If the Secretary of State refused to pursue his false claims at one point, warning Raffensperger that he was taking a, quote, big risk. Well, <laughs> how did that turn out for the Washington Post? According to the Washington Post's account of the phone call, Trump cajoled, threatened, begged, and whined for a way to get him over the line. And the story shot around the world as further evidence of the media's could claim that Donald Trump was a sore loser and an overgrown man baby who couldn't result, accept the results of the election. In the U.S., the story spread like wildfire. NBC News said that the characterization of the uh, agreed to the December 23rd call through a source familiar with the conversation. USA Today claimed a, quote, Georgia official speaking on the condition of anonymity to discuss internal matters confirmed the details of the call. CNN, of course, also ran with it, saying that, quote, Trump pressured Georgia elections investigators to search for dishonesty in the 2020 ballots. And here in Australia, the story was no different. The Sydney Morning Herald ran no less than four stories in five days about the supposed phone call. The Australian Financial Review said the call sparked wide condemnation. And, of course, the ABC said the story put Trump's entire legacy, quote, on the line. So why am I telling you all this? Well, simply because the original Washington Post story, which sparked so much outrage around the world, was not true. But because it fit Everyone in the left-leaning media's preconceived ideas about Trump, it spread like wildfire. And this week, the paper issued this correction. Quote, correction. Two months after publication of this story, the Georgia Secretary of State released an audio recording of the president, Donald Trump's December phone call with the state's top elections investigator. The recording revealed that the Post misquoted Trump's comments on the call based on information provided by a source. Trump did not tell the investigator to find the fraud or say she would be a, quote, national hero if she did so. Instead, Trump urged the investigator to scrutinize ballots in Fulton County, Georgia, asserting they would find dishonesty there. He also told her that she had, quote, the most important job in the country right now. A story about the recording can be found here. The headline and the text of the story have been corrected to remove, quotes, misattributed to Trump, etc., and so on. So it turns out there that the story that sparked so much outrage over that phone call, well, the Washington Post had never heard the original call. It had relied on secondhand reports. And when the actual recording of the call was found, oddly enough, in the trash bin of a computer belonging to Georgia election authorities, it revealed the call was nothing like how it was originally characterized. But that didn't matter. Because the original quote-unquote report had done its job, furthering the narrative, or rather fortifying the election result, as Time magazine famously put it, that Trump had no business being anywhere near high office. Now, this isn't about whether or not Trump won or lost. Biden is president, and the world has moved on. But what it is about is a media that has anointed itself the arbiter of truth, and when it appears they don't even know the meaning of that word.